Clan boss is one of the biggest things in Raid Shadow Legends. It's going to help progress your account so much. It's the main access to shards, books, and so much more. But the question is, how do you create and what are the basic things you need for a team to try to get to that ultra nightmare chest? Let's find out. What's going on guys, Blazin here. Welcome back to the channel and thanks for joining me on another Raid Shadow Legends video. We gotta discuss Land boss and the reason for that is because as you can see on the screen right now it just gave me a sacred shard it is one of the best places to get books right to get shards which we need for the fusions or to acquire new champions so it's the number one thing that you need to start focusing on but the thing is there's a lot of things that come into gameplay right into the mechanics and so there's some things you need to know on how to create your clan boss team. Now, most of us are going to use what we call an unkillable team, right? And you can see here, this is what is called a myth food team. Another one over here, most of us are using a Demitha comp. That is an unkillable. It's great if you have the champions, but if you don't, you need to start working up to that team, right? You need to start working up to trying to get to this big thing here. You want that transcended chest because these are the rewards it's got in it and it's got the best chances of trying to get them. But again, how do we get to this? Well, first of all, let's get the first thing out of the way. The clan boss starts off as void. Now, once void is below 50%, you have a chance of one in 33 of becoming either one of these, whether it's spirit, magic, or force. So the problem that you're gonna have is you need to try to create a team that is going to be affinity friendly right that's what the terminology when you hear affinity friendly it means that it can go up against every one of these affinities no problem you don't need to change it but that's easier said than done all right so let's talk about the abilities what do we need to actually prepare for right so he's got three abilities his a1 is a stun now this doesn't take precedence on his order he's going to use this the last one it's going to be the third one it basically hits with enemy max HP hits. So the more HP you have, the more it's going to hurt. So when you hear what's called a stun target, this is what they mean by it, right? Usually champions for this have a higher defense with lower HP to make sure that they mitigate a lot more of the damage. So this will always happen on every third turn. He will not open with this. Next up is his A2, right? We'll place an increased attack on himself and place a decreased attack on you. But depending on the affinity, so if he's magic affinity, he's going to place a decreased accuracy. If he's spirit affinity, he's going to place a decreased speed, which is probably one of the biggest problems a lot of the players face is uh, spirit affinity. So that said, he's going to do a uh, double hit or sorry, a single hit. The next one is a double hit. He's going to do a single hit, and once it's below 50%, it becomes a double hit. Now on his A3, he attacks all enemies four times, places an increased attack buff on himself for two turns. If you are not running an unkillable team, this can destroy you, right? After 20 turns of his turns, the damage that he puts out is significant, and there is a big boost to it, right? So, making sure that you deal with this adequately is going to be a big thing as for his passives he's he gets decreased on the hp burns and the poisons on what he can actually take he's not he's not susceptible to decrease speed sleep stun fear or any of that he's immune to basically any sort of cc manipulation all right so let's talk about debuffs next right these are going to basically either help us boost our damage or make sure that we are surviving as much as possible the one thing that you do want to take into account is the debuff bar stacks up to 10. that's it you can't put more than 10 debuffs up you can increase the duration but that's it so with that said we got to be a little careful with what we bring in for the buff the debuffs so the basic necessity ones that you're going to want to try to bring in is a decreased defense a decreased attack a block debuffs right don't worry about crit damage or crit rate those don't really help you can't use block active skills sleep doesn't work on him bombs they're not going to do enough damage weaken is one of the ones you want to try to bring in right giving us that extra damage block revive provoke and dazed aren't going to really do anything decapitated has nothing to do with this hex 
doesn't really help out because you're not spreading the damage leech if you're not using life seal sets this is actually pretty crucial to try to heal yourself up especially if you don't have other champions on the team that are going to heal hp burn is definitely one that you want to try to bring in fear we don't really use on clan boss poison sen sensitivity if you are using a champion like a frozen banshee or a kill or some sort of other poisoner definitely want to try to bring that in if you can that's more of a luxury though right you don't want to try to fill the debuff bar with too many poisons because that can also make sure that you don't actually land like the block debuffs the decrease attack block active skills not going to work on clan boss petrification doesn't work on clan boss pain link doesn't work on clan boss heal reduction doesn't work on clan boss it's a useless thing to put on him decrease resistance honestly the speed or the accuracy that's needed is basically 250 on nightmare you could make that build pretty easy don't put any decrease resistance on him smite is actually one of the ones you do want to bring in right does huge amounts of damage iron bread nut matter can't really use it cheap isn't really going to work on it poisons is one that you do want to try to bring in but again make sure that you actually just not overfill the bar with poisons because you can, will find yourself putting a lot of poisons on the boss and then that could actually screw up your run and feeble doesn't really help seal not really going to work and berserk is definitely one that it will increase the damage but it'll also give him more damage so this is one that you really want to try to be careful putting on well what kind of buffs are we going to need for this boss right again with the buffs same thing it stacks up to 10 so putting more than 10 or trying to put more than 10 is not going to happen and again it's one of those things where you need to be careful what you bring because you don't want to put too many buffs up that aren't going to be useful so starting off with block debuffs it's definitely one of the ones you want to try to bring in increase attack if you have an uh, an attack based champion like a ninja or something else then you want to try to bring that in if you can't it's not a problem it's a damage booster that's all it's going to do it's boost the damage it's not going to give you survivability the increased defense that's actually one that you must bring in it helps out a lot with survivability and especially if you have a defense based nuka like a rosin it's going to give you better numbers now increase speed this is a little tough because unless you're doing a specific speed tune this could actually screw up your turn order right putting champions ahead of other ones making sure that the stun target is not done properly or the turns for cleansing are not done properly so unless you're working with a specific speed tune if you're going just for a pure one-to-one -one comp or a traditional comp unless it calls for it i wouldn't really use increased speed decrease accuracy doesn't matter it's not gonna help right the stun is irresistible the other debuffs are gonna happen regardless so don't bring it up increase crit rate and increase crit damage now these two are going to be kind of the same if you're building your champions because they have a certain ability in the skill kit or an ally attack which gives them increased crit rate or increased crit damage if those buffs are coming in then that allows you to build your champions with 70 percent crit rate and then boost the damage so these are a luxury if the champion fits and it has it in the skill kit then you can use it but don't go out of your way trying to put these into your team shields now shields are going to be a big thing to try to mitigate that damage your hp pool your hit pool is only going to be so big making sure that you can try to bring in some champions that have a shield on a two turn cooldown or a three turn cooldown gonna be actually pretty good let's talk about revive revive on death now after the first 50 turns it works after the next 50 turns after turn 50 it doesn't work anymore right this could also mess up your speed tune so unless the turn or the comp calls for it try to just stay away from it right Allied protection is actually one of the biggest things you can bring in making sure that you take less damage and it transfers it to the uh, protector themselves is a big thing now there are a couple of things that you need to take into account with an ally protection and the biggest one is just make sure you don't put a lot of crit damage on whoever the protector is basically who's ever casting this if you do that's going to cause more damage to them 
there's we'll do a, a guide later down the line where it's a little more in depth let's talk about unkillable now unkillable unless you're running an unkillable comp this is definitely one that you want to try to bring in especially the champions are going to be a little heavy on damage taking right so it does help if they have like a two turn again but this is more specific to a uh, specific speed tune or a specific composition but champions like a skull crusher who do have like a counter attack and a one turn unkillable on themselves that'll work reflect damage it can help it's not a great thing it's not going to reduce the amount of damage you take it just reflects it right so with this one i wouldn't really worry too much about it rage is not one that we're going to be able to use veil veil is actually one that can reduce the amount of damage you take on aoe hits it can help out quite a bit champions like duchess that have it work out well uh, it also do it on solo hits as well too but it'll do it on a perfect veil will do 15 percent on a regular veil some weaker version is 7.5 percent it helps but honestly i wouldn't count too much on it because it's very inconsistent unless you can keep it up 100 percent of the time this isn't one of those buffs that I would worry to keep up too much. Counterattack. Counterattack comes in and is probably one of the better things to boost your damage. Basically, free attacks. Every time the boss attacks you, you gain more damage back. It helps. It's not a necessity though, right? So if you really want to try to bring it in, and there's very minimal champions that have this, so you probably won't by the time you get a counterattack champion you'll already have an unkillable team strengthen strengthen is actually going to help you increase the versatility of your champions or not versatility but i guess the survivability of your champions right uh giving you a 15 or 25 percent strengthen basically means you're taking that much less damage eternal rage is something you don't do block damage now this is what i was talking about the demythicomps these are basically you take no damage at all whatsoever so if you have a specific comp that can use this then i would say go for it right blocking any damage coming in would definitely help unkillable teams and block damage teams are abusing this all the time life barrier life barrier doesn't have anything to do with this poison cloud has nothing to do with us as well stone skin stone skin is not something you really want to bring into clan boss it's a one turn or two turn thing so don't build your champions looking for stone skin trying to help you survive vengeance not something we do here serpent's will not something we do here increased resistance not gonna help you can have as much resistance as you want on it you're still gonna get three percented so don't bring that on bone armor is a blessing you could but i think trying to boost your damage you're gonna find a different blessing on lightning orb same thing you could but you're gonna find a different blessing that can do a little more damage as for taunt taunt is one of those ones where on the single target hit you can make it so that the clan boss hits this particular champion right i wouldn't really concern myself with it if you build your champions the right way you'll be able to make sure that you are a getting the stun target on the proper champion uh, eclipse not something we can use intercept now intercept basically blocks the stun so if you can bring this in for the whole team or for the stun target himself this could work right will it be the best thing to bring in no but it does help out as like a block debuffs type of thing only for cc continuous heals is going to be actually another good thing or another thing that you want to try to bring in but if you bring in too many continuous heals this is where you can get yourself into trouble such like poisons too many continuous heals overfills the bar so champions that are you know using it on their a1 and can produce continuous heals a lot more than everybody else it's a good way to sustain yourself but you don't want to overfill the bar with it all right, so let's talk about speed tuning. Now, speed tuning is basically a crucial part because you need to know when the order of what is going to happen. And the best way to know and start learning that is knowing what your opponent's speeds are. So on Ultra Nightmare, the clan boss is at 190 speed. On Nightmare, the clan boss is at 170. At Brutal, it's at 160. 
hard is 140 normal is 120 and easy is 90. so this is just a basic speed tune for an ultra nightmare team this is basically when the clan boss goes at 190 speed and you try to speed tune everybody else to go to the same speed as the clan boss so you take a turn they take a turn right so you can see here that we have narsana tyrell that are going first because we have them speed tuned to go first right so they go at 205 and 194 and then everybody else based on what skills they bring so like bulwark who brings in the block debuffs we want to make sure he goes up before the poisons or before the decrease attack or decrease speed comes up that way we don't have to worry about those debuffs landing on us and then you have your damage dealers and then so on and so forth trying to make sure you come up with the good speed composition and the right composition for the speed tuning is key to making sure that you last as long as possible and do as much damage as possible you don't really want a champion that has a increased attack going after the champions that are attacking and likewise you don't want a champion that has increased defense going after you're going to take the damage boost right you want to be able to be prepared for it so you want those coming in prior to taking those nukes or prior to you know nuking the clan boss now i will leave a link in the description below on how to or where to access this calculator it is a phenomenal tool to have the more you play with it the more you learn about it it helps out a lot i hope that this video helped in showing you what you need to know to come up with a clan boss team now again there are hundreds of speed tunes out there you could literally just find one copy it and you'll be fine but sometimes you may not have those proper champions which means you need to start coming up with your own speed tune you need to try to fix your team as much as possible following some of this stuff that we talked about can help you last longer in the fight can help you deal more damage and get you basically to that chest on ultra nightmare because that is the key that we want to try to achieve right making sure that we bring in the proper buffs and putting on the proper debuffs not overfilling the bar with the improper buffs or debuffs is a big thing so make sure you keep that into account i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you guys did or found anything that you didn't know or you know learned something new i guess make sure to smash that like button consider subscribing to the channel it really helps me out a lot and if you've got some time swing by on sunday 2 p.m est for the knights of Teleria podcast where we talk everything raid shadow legends we talk about the good the bad the ugly we talk about stuff like this sometimes trying to engage with the community or trying to teach the community certain things that we might know or hey the community teaches us some things too sometimes we're not the best at knowing everything we're human at all. As always, guys, much love, much appreciation. Be safe, be well, be good to each other, and I'll catch you guys next time.